I just want to read a few verses from 1 Peter 1 to uh, 1 Peter 1 to the first five verses. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who are reside uh, as aliens and scattered through Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, who are chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father by the sanctification and work of the Spirit, that you may obey Jesus Christ and be sprinkled with his blood. May, may grace and peace be yours in the fullness of measure. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are protected by the power of God, through faith, for, for sal a salvation, ready to be revealed in the last days. Amen. I want to quote a little song. Christ is alive today, risen, ascended, glorified. Christ is alive today. If we want a title for my message this morning is living in the dynamic power of the resurrection life of Christ. And Jesus said in uh, John 11, spoke about Lazarus this morning, John 11, 25, Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he were dead, he shall live. I like that Jesus said, I am. And several times he said that word, I am the vine. I am the bread. I am the light. I am. And he finally says it in Revelation with this road. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I am the resurrection and the life. Whosoever lives and believes in me shall not die, but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Father and God and our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy, in the old uh, uh, translation it says begotten, which means to be born again, uh, uh, begotten again, to a, live, a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The dynamic power of the resurrection of Christ brings a new life. In Christ, to be begotten means to be born again of the Spirit of God. And you remember in John 3 when Nicodemus went to Jesus and Jesus said to him, you must, you must be born again. You, you must be born again or you'll never see the kingdom of God. You must be born again or you'll never enter the kingdom of God. You see, when we are born again of the spirit of God, we are, we are inherit, uh, I just wrote this down as it came to me, we inherit the DNA of heaven. Remember that uh, in Philippians 3.20, it says, for our citizenship is in heaven. And Ephesians 2 says, 6 says, we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. When we are born again, we are no longer, we are born with the heavenly uh, uh, DNA, that we are on the way to heaven. Hallelujah. John 3, some says, do not marvel, I say unto you, you must be born again. And without the power of the resurrection, of Jesus Christ, our faith, our salvation would have collapsed. We remember what uh, to, uh, the 1 Corinthians 15, 17 says, if Christ has, is not risen, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. 
You know, I'm glad that Jesus Christ rose again. You know, God could have rose him after he said, it is finished. He could have raised him at his life from off the cross after he said, it is finished. But no, he took him down from the cross, placed him in a tomb, sealed it with a stone. And upon the third day, he rose again, victorious over life, over, over death, sin and hell. I am the resurrection and the life. And we can live in that victory of his resurrection. Amen. It, uh, John 1, 3 tells us that we have received from the power of the resurrection life. We have received the abundance of mercy. That which we did not deserve. The abundance of mercy. And we received from that mercy the enrichment of his grace and the power of God's forgiveness and the power of God's love towards us. It all comes through the, the abounding mercy, the abundant mercy of God. And in God says that he, he, he enriches with that. That's why we need to be born again. You know, just, just as the, the angel said today uh, to Mary, the Spirit of God will come upon you. The Holy Spirit, and that which is born of you, will be of the Holy Spirit. And that's the same as when we are born again of the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit gives concept to the Word of God that is placed within our hearts. And God gives us the faith to believe that we can have a new life in Christ today. And cry, if Christ had not rose again, it would not have been a new life. It would have been, we would have been still dead in our sins, as I've already said. But today, Christ is alive today, written, <coughs> ascended, glorified. And we, Jesus says, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. Forget the forgiveness of God, the pardon that we can have from God, the peace of God we can have with God, reconciled to God, this dynamic pro product of the power of the resurrection, the new birth, brings us into a new inheritance. Because Peter writes in that verse, we have obtained an inheritance in Christ Jesus. Oh, what an inheritance we have. And we can enjoy that inheritance now, not just for when the future, yes, in heaven, yes, but now we can enjoy the inheritance that Christ has got for us through his power of his resurrection. Listen to what it says, in him we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. will. With this inheritance comes a guarantee as well. You know, just been talking about my camera. The camera can run out of guarantee. But God's guarantee is for eternal. God's salvation for you and me is eternal. As long as we keep being unsaved. I don't believe in this. It once saved, always saved. The eternal. But as long as we keep on being saved. We can know this guarantee of salvation. Here we have, he has obtained a salvation that's guaranteed. Listen, the, the verse I read was Ephesians 1, 11. The next verse in Ephesians 1, 14, who is <clears throat> the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise and glory. This inheritance which Christ has purchased and provides for us is an inheritance. And I love, when I read these words, I was really, really, really uh, uh, blessed by them, overtaken by them. It says in that Peter, 1 Peter 4, that this inheritance is incorruptible. This inheritance is undefiled. This inheritance never fades away. It will never perish. 
It will never get defiled by man or by sin, for our God is a holy God. And this inheritance is, is, is purchased by the precious blood of Jesus, and it is a holy, holy inheritance, a divine inheritance that comes from God himself and does not pass away. Hallelujah. Does not fade. Doesn't doesn't uh, get tarnished in any way. What words Peter uses in this verse? Incorruptible, undefiled, that does not fade away. I said that our inheritance is a guarantee by God, but it's also reserved by God. It says reserved in heaven for you and for me. What breathtaking words, the, the imperishable, undefiled, does not fade away, reserved for you and for me in heaven today. And we can enjoy the blessedness of the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I'm glad that I serve a risen saviour and is in the world today. Well, I'm glad that Jesus is alive. We used to sing a chorus, Jesus is alive. His is the blood that ransomed me. His is the power that sets me free. He is the Lord. Jesus is alive this morning. Oh, we praise God for that, that we have a living saviour. We have a guarantee. Not only that, we have a, uh, we have a guardian of that inheritance. Because it says in verse 5, who protects us, who keeps us by the power of his spirit. And you know, this inheritance is, 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 is a wonderful inheritance. What did Jesus say in John 14 2? In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. There's a storehouse. The mansions that he's building will have a storehouse of the inheritance that he procured for us at the cross of Calvary and through the power of this resurrection, living in the dynamic power of the resurrection. We can live in that power today, live in the power of his victory, live in the power of the knowledge that he has forgiven us. Oh, today we can live in the power of freedom from the past from our own self-condemnation. God has set us free this morning because of the power <coughs> of the resurrection. The storehouse of heaven is full of the unsearchable riches. Without the power of the resurrection, we would never have inherited this. Christ is alive today, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed. Do you know, the angels will be absolutely staggered, bewildered, and yet filled with glory and honour when, when they see us, when Christ presents us before God to the in the throne of God as sinners saved by grace. You know, we will walk the streets of glory and we will we'll be surprised who we meet. And we'll say, how did you get here? They'll only have one answer. Through the love of God. We have no other. Because no other, heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word, the hope and faith will pass away. But his love endures forever. Through the love of God. Through the power of his precious blood. Through the power of his resurrection. We will have life. A life more abundantly, life eternal. Listen to what Revelation says. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. This life in Christ brings us a great challenge. This inheritance that we want to receive brings us to a greater challenge. You must be born again. There is no other way can we enter into this inheritance in Christ Jesus. We must know the salvation of God. 
We must know his forgiveness. We must recognize that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We must recognize why Jesus went to the cross. We must recognize that Jesus rose from the dead, that we might receive this inheritance that Peter wrote about. Lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. You know, sometimes we're like the woman that went into the temple and was bowed down. All she could see was the earth. All she could see was down. But Jesus spoke to her and rose her up. And she saw Jesus lay up treasures in heaven. Don't let, <coughs> keep serving the Lord and working for the Lord. And keep praising him and blessing him. And re reaching out and uh, uh, love his word more than ever. Seek for the fullness of the spirit. To lay up treasures in heaven. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust, de uh, rust destroy and where thieves break in. All the enemy wants to break in when we seek to live for God, when we, seek, when we seek to serve him. The enemy wants to come in. The thief has come to seek, to rob and to steal and to kill. But don't let him. But, sir, but put your trust and keep walking with the Lord nearer and nearer as that day come, because he is coming again. Matthew 6 says this, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth or rust destroys and where thieves can't steal it. Hallelujah. He said that twice in two verses, 19 and 20 and Matthew 6. The challenge is, it says here in 21 Matthew, 621 where your treasure is there will also be your heart the joy of enjoying enduring enjoying the inheritance of god lay up treasures lay it up store it up god has a storehouse of i've already said but we can start to fill it in as well in our, in our lives, in seeking him and serving him. And Jesus, and Jesus there's, a, there's a little verse again that uh, uh, Matthew 25 says, then the king will say to those on his right hand, come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom preferred for you from the foundation of the world. The king is, just as God is pleased and happy to see us born again of the Spirit of God through the sacrifice and resurrection of Christ. God <coughs> will be pleased to see us. See us at the right hand of the Father. Seeing us and seeing face to face with Jesus. He'll say, come and bless my Father. Inherit. Inherit the kingdom. Prepare. Like we said, Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you from the foundation of the world. God has had his eye on you right from the day, even before you was born. God has got his eye on you. God has put his hand on you. And he wants you to step in and be born again of the spirit of God, that you might inherit the inheritance that Christ has got for you, which is guaranteed for you. To this inheritance, which is incorruptible, is not defiled, never fades away, all because Christ died for us and rose again. He wants us to live in the power and the dynamic power of his resurrection. Christ is alive today, risen, ascended, glorified. Will you? Walk with him today. God, Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. Amen.